In this video, I'm going to give you six tips that you can use to keep your small wood stove from smoking excessively. And if you stick around to the end, I'll give you one bonus tip. Keep watching. All right, before we get started, I just want to mention that I will be using the Bushcraft Essential Bushbox XL for a reason. I find that this is the stove that most people will complain about that it smokes excessively, and the blame is often laid with the size of the trivets or the pot stands that the standoff isn't tall enough for this stove and that there is not enough airflow uh, exhaust room at the top of the stove and I wanted to assure you that that is not the case, that there are a variety of reasons that you should consider on how you can improve the performance of your stove, prevent smoking before you even consider replacing or doing something else about the trivets on top. All right, let's get started. All right, tip number one, use dry wood. Now, hold on, before you say anything, I know what you're thinking, Mark, that is obvious. I wouldn't use damp wood in my wood stove. I wouldn't use it in an open fire, so that's not an issue. Well, that's true. You can get away with using slightly damp wood in an open fire, because the, the dynamic of heat will dry the wood out and it will combust and add to the fire. In a small wood stove, that's not often the case. The smaller the wood stove, the more important this becomes. But in any small wood stove, if your wood is at all damp, the moisture is gonna keep the combustion temperatures lower than ideal. So as the chemicals are released as, as smoke, and rather than combust and burn as flame, they will just create a whole lot of smoke. So use the driest wood you can find. And I know it goes without saying, don't use green wood. I know no one watching this video would use a, a cut down a living tree expecting to use it as fuel but it's important to understand that you can find what appears to be a great looking piece of dead standing wood you know it to be dead because there are no leaves the small branches at the very top of all gone bark may be coming off exposing dry wood underneath but you'd have to understand that it may not be as dead as or dead long enough to really be fully dried out in the center so when you harvest that tree and you cut it down and you split it up make sure that it is really dry before you use it in your wood stove. All right, tip number two, the type of wood that you're using in your stove. So the best wood that you can use is hardwood. Without question, it is going to be the wood that gives you the most BTUs or the most heat for the weight of the wood itself. So hardwoods like maple and oak and even birch are great choices for using in your wood stove. If you choose to use softwood such as pine or spruce or fir, they will work. But you have to understand these are very resinous woods and that resin will cause a lot of smoke. That fire will be hot for, and for a short, brief period of time, but it will re release a lot of resins and all that resin will attach itself to any pot that you have on top of the stove, causing a sticky, sooty mess. So use a hardwood, preferentially over a softwood. Now, if you're using wood pellets, then wood pellets are great. They are dry to a standard that you know, they are gonna work well. The trick to keep wood pellets from smoking is not not to overload your stove. It does depend on the design of your stove, but the stove that we're working with today, the XL, uh, Bush Box XL from Bushcraft Essentials, I will use about one cup of hardwood pellets in it, and that still gives me plenty of time, 30 minutes or more of cooking time and grilling time after that in that stove. Other stoves you might be able to get more in, the smaller the stove, the less you wanna get in. My experience has been about one cup of hardwood pellets is what you want. Tip number three, don't overload your stove. At least to start with when you're first getting your fire going, don't put too much wood in it. Now I know it's popular recently, and I've done this as well, to pre-load your stove, vertically stacked sticks. Sometimes you'll do it as a Swedish fire torch, where you'll take a log of a given size, slightly smaller than the uh, dimensions of the stove, split it into four, and create that fire log type of an effect inside of the stove. Uh, this applies to that as well, but it also applies to where you split a whole lot of wood into smaller, uh, smaller size pieces and stack it vertically in the stove with the intent to light a fire on top for a top-down burn. It's very effective. It does work. What I like about that type of preloading is that at least for the along, for the period of time that the wood is still in the stove burning, I don't have to add additional wood. Now, when it does get down to a point where I have to add wood, that's a different story. But it's a great way to use your stoves. Um, but there is a caveat to that. 
don't overpack your stoves with so much wood that the air can't flow through the sticks. And if it's a Swedish fire torch, don't make sure that the gap, the cross gap between them is open enough. And I know there's a certain dynamic where it will work and won't work, but make sure that there's enough of a gap for airflow to work its way up through the center of that cross portion of the log. So don't overfill and that includes don't bring it up too high, too close to the top of the stove. You need enough of a gap between the top of the stove, the pot stands or trivets and where the wood is for the fire that you're igniting on top to combust properly and not be smothered from not enough air. And then of course it will start working its way down into the preload. That also goes with if you're going with a bottom up burn. Make sure that you, when you get that initial burn in the bottom, whether you're using birch bark or a pre-made fire starter, and you're adding your small kindling and then working your way up to bigger pieces of fuel, don't load the stove so much that there is completely filled to the top. Allow the fire to get established before you add more and more wood to it. And in this way, you won't overload the stove. You won't reduce the combustion temperatures to a point where the gases cannot be ignited and you'll have a much cleaner burn. Tip number four, wait till your fire is fully engaged before you put your pot on top of the stove. What I'm suggesting is, is don't get the fire going, put all kinds of wood in, and then immediately put the pot on top of the stove. This is done for a couple of reasons. Airflow has to be at its best when the wood is first igniting and the fire is becoming established. When the fire is fully established, then airflow will maximize itself and you're safe to put a pot on top. Again, if going back to number three, don't overload your stove load the sticks, get the fire going, and once the fire is fully engaged, then put a pot on. You see, one of the things that happens when you put a pot on top of the stove, or two things that happen, in fact, is first off, you're going to restrict airflow to a certain degree. It happens. It has to happen because you are covering off a portion of the exhaust area with your pot. In addition, if your pot is full of cold water, then you're cooling off the smoke as it starts to be generated by the combustion of the wood. That cooling smoke or that cooling off period will reduce the combustion of the in the or the temperatures within the combustion chamber, and you won't get a complete and full combustion. What you will end up with is a lot of smoke turn into tarry resins on the bottom of your part, pot. So make sure that you wait until the fire is well engaged before you put your pot on top. Tip number five, size the pot to the size of your stove. And what I mean by that is simply this. If you have a very small stove, and there are some pretty small stoves as you've seen if you watched any of my videos, and you decide to use a large pot, like a one and a half to two liter or larger pot on top of a very small stove, well, two things. The heat will never generate, well, the stove will never generate enough heat to effectively have a clean combustion and heat whatever it is you have in that pot, presumably water or soup or something else. So if you're using a small stove, use a small pot. Now, the reverse isn't necessarily the same, though. If you have a large stove, you can use a much, much larger pot but you can also use a smaller pot on a larger stove. So this is an argument in favor of larger stoves. Yes, I have some small stoves and I will take them with me because they're smaller and lighter and easier to use, but I understand in doing so that I'm gonna be restricted to smaller pots. Tip number six. Now for this part of the video, I needed to come down to the stump top here so that I can demonstrate using the Bushbox XL and give you an idea of a few options here. So primarily this tip is about using the pot stands or the trivets correctly on the stove. Now while I am using the Bushbox, because as I mentioned earlier in the start of the video, this is the stove that it appears that most people seem to complain about when it comes to not having enough ventilation because the pot stands are not high enough. Well, let's just take a look at that issue. So these are two of the supplied trivets or pot stands that are used with the Bushbox XL. And I won't go through all the details about either these trivets or the Bushbox because I do have a, se a separate, complete and quite extensive video on this. But what I want to show you is that these trivets are designed to set at different heights depending on what you want. Now, I'll be honest, 
tallest. Most of the time, I try to set it at the tallest height. For that, I will use the shallowest notches that are available on the trivets, and usually I run them from front to back, like this. And this gives me the greatest standoff. Now, it is not a tremendous amount of height off the top of the stove, but it is a good amount of height. It is a, a sufficient amount of height for most of the uses that I'll use the stove for, especially if I have been very diligent in doing the first five things that we've already talked about. This will provide enough height. Now, one thing that I will tell you is if I have a really large pot, of course, it is going to obstruct some of the airflow coming out around it uh, through the top of the stove. So it can have a tendency to be a little smokier than something that has a taller standoff to it. But my experience has been that if you follow those first five tips, then these trivets, these crossbars, will be sufficient to prevent your stove from smoking excessively. Having said that, there are options that I want to share with you now. So let's take those off. So the first option should come as no surprise to anybody. This is the cross stands that are made by Siege Stove as part of their uh, top and bottom. These are the pot stand portion of the Siege Stove. What is great about these is that I can use them with a stove like the Bush Box and gain considerable amount of height on top. In fact, I can use them setting them across in the supplied slots. These will fit perfectly. And now look at how much height and how much offset I have for a pot. Now, again, you should not need that, but if you are looking for additional height for your pots, because you find you just cannot operate the stove without a whole lot of smoke, then yes, this will work. Now, I will tell you, if you use higher pot stands like this, two things will happen. One is it's going to get really, really hot because there is now so much airflow that the fire will burn much quicker and much hotter. Now, if all you're looking for is a boiling of water, then that's fine. That's great. In fact, maybe the hotter the better. But if you're looking to use a pan and cook bacon and eggs or whatever else you want in the pan, you don't want that much heat. You want the heat to be a moderate to moderately high without being so high that it burns and scorches and causes things to stick to the pan. So if you're boiling water, then high pot stands are great because it will go through the fuel and it will cause a lot more heat. But if you're doing anything else, then you may want to go back to using the original pot stands. So those are the pot stands, the top of pot stands from Siege Stove. I have another set as well. Now, this is from another German manufacturer. This is from Wicca Technologies. These are a set of pot stands that they have created as an accessory for their stoves. And I have done extensive reviews on the FlexFire series of stoves, and these are optional ones. Now, the, what's cool about these, and I have shown this in the past as well, is these are designed to be used also with a Trangia or another alcohol stove as a cross stand because they'll sit right on top of the stove. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not a fan of using them that way because even though these are skeletonized and they're a quite a lightweight uh, alloy made of stainless and uh, steel combined with titanium, they still provide a lot of a heat sink for the alcohol stove. So as the alcohol stove is first starting to warm up, this will take so much of the heat off that it takes an excessive amount of time before the stove can get hot. However, they make a great set of pot stands for use on top of the uh, bush box and other stoves as well and once again they are sized to fit with the slots in the provided slots on top of the stove and again again look at the amount of offset that you get on top of the stove so that is another option if you want to uh, buy a, per, a set of these. So, of course, as you can well imagine, I will provide the information where the Siege Stove uh, cross stands can be purchased, as well as the cross stands from Wicca Technology. The last option is to make a set for yourself. So here's a set of pot stands made from stainless steel. These ones are not made from a stainless steel ruler like I've shown in other videos, but they're very, very easy to make. And you can do exactly the same thing with these. You can create them or make a set that will fit with the provided slots. 
and you'll get additional height off the top of your stove and uh, you'll get more complete hotter combustion. Again, hotter is the key word here. Now, there's one other thing I want to show you with these cross stands and it will work with the other ones as well, at least with the bush box. So I have put them in the cross stand fashion like this and I can put them right on top of the stove and they will go corner to corner perfectly and now I can put a very small pot on to a very large pot on and it's very stable and provides a lot of additional height for that hotter burn. Once again, your stove will burn hotter, it will burn faster. It's okay for boiling water, not so great for frying things in a pan. All right, quick review of the six tips for reducing the amount of smoke in your wood stove. So number one, use dry wood. The drier the better. It's more important, especially the smaller the stove. Number two, use hardwoods if you have a choice. Softwoods would work, but softwoods being full of resin will cause a lot of smoke that will become a sticky mess on the bottom of your pots. Number three, don't overfill your stove. When you're getting the fire going, get the fire going and add wood until you have a good amount of combustion. Too much wood too quickly, will lower the temperature inside the stove. You'll get an incomplete combustion because the temperatures can't rise to that critical uh, number. Number four, wait until the, fully is, the fire is fully engaged before you put a pot on top so that you don't restrict airflow too quickly before the fire has a chance to really establish itself. Number five, use the right size pot for the stove. Don't use too large a pot on too small a stove. You can always use a small pot on a large stove but the other way around will sometimes cause too much of a restriction and therefore reduce the amount of air and cause excessive smoking. Number five or number six is use your pot stands correctly the way they were intended to be used by the designer. If you want to use pot stands with a higher standoff then you must understand that you will get more heat because there will be more airflow so you might get a, a great amount of heat for boiling water but you could cause anything in a fry pan to burn. All right. I did mention when we started this video that I had one bonus tip for you and that tip is this. It may not be your stove that is causing all the smoke. It might be your pot. If you have watched my videos and you look at just how sooty some of my pots are, because as I mentioned, I don't mind them being sooty and resiny, all that resin and creosote and soot that has attached itself to, the, to my pots, when I place that on even a good, clean, well-burning stove, it in itself will burn and it will cause smoke. So it may not have nothing to do with the stove, it may be the pot that you're using. All right, before we close this video out, I just want to point out that these are wood stoves we're talking about. They're going to smoke. That's what wood stoves do. All fires create some amount of smoke. What we're trying to do is reduce the amount of smoke so that we don't have massive clouds of smoke and all kinds of soot being created and that our profile in the woods is as low as possible. Now, of course, there is one benefit to having a stove that's very smoky, especially in the spring and in the summer, is, and that is, of course, it'll chase away the flies. But we are looking for as clean and effective and efficient a burn from our wood stoves as possible. And the six tips that I just gave you, if you work to accomplish all six of those tips, will give you just exactly that, the best and most efficient burn in your wood stove. Okay, if you have any comments or any suggestions or anything you want to add to this video, then please put those in the comments section below. If you would like to see any other videos like that, mention that in the comments section below. And as I mentioned, I will put references to where you can purchase offsets or the pot stand trivets like I've shown. I'll put that in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.